Alright, that's the new train station over there. And this is all new over here. This was once owned, all of this that you see. All of what you see. And continued down that driveway and all of this. This was once was all just parking lot and vacant property. So all of this is a big brewery, restaurant, whatever, brewery and restaurant, but all of this belongs to Chris. Well, he sold some of the property because he really didn't need it. They bought all that property, him and his father. Now that's, there's a marina there too, and there's a restaurant inside and you know, there's a lot, there's a lot there. Um, underpass <laughs> or overpass um, him and his father bought that and like I say they have about five or six hundred feet if not more of uh, dock space for boats and such um, they bought all that for four hundred and fifty thousand dollars and now it's probably worth four million or better. I mean, it's, it's that's the increase of property around here, uh, especially waterfront property, and that much of it. Okay. Um, he what he does is he does indoor storage and outdoor storage. He's reasonable, you know, for boats. Uh, he's got the marina there. Uh, he keeps the marina kind of at a minimum. He doesn't overpack it, uh, and he only lets certain people in. Uh, Chris is a good guy. Uh, I got him into my gun club. Um, so, uh, you know, he actually lost his permit over, well, it wasn't something stupid, but it wasn't really his fault. He bought a new uh, HK, and he kept it in the center console glove box with his money. Now, I'm looking for 125. There we go, 125. Perfect. There's a parking lot even. This is even better yet wonderful thing anyway um, I forgot where I was oh he lost his permit he he's old he's a young guy you know, he's probably in his 40s but he's old business old school you know you learn from his dad so they have an office they have a safe but he keeps his money cash usually with him or he keeps it locked up in the center console of his his truck, all right, uh, which he also keeps locked because most of the time he's in the yard. Well, somewhere along the line, um, he was pulling the boats out of the water and the alarm button on his lock, his car alarm, uh, must have hit and it unlocked the doors unbeknown to him. Well, while he was down on one side of the yard, not able to actually see his truck, but thinking it was safe because he's been doing this for years, 20 years or better. Um, apparently, uh, an old employee was around, didn't see him, knew that he kept his money in the center console, goes in there, grabs the money, and he sees the new gun in there, and he takes the gun. Now, Chris isn't the type of guy, nor does he even think about, you know, well, I'm going to report my gun stolen so I can keep it. And nobody knows I have it or I can sell it on the black market or whatever. He doesn't even think of that stuff. You know, him and his wife are just very naive people um, and, and very good people. Well, anyway, to make a long story short, they took his permit away from him because his gun was stolen. That's how it is here in Connecticut. Now, it took him nine months and an attorney, and he had to sit in front of the Board of Firearms in order to get his gun back. Not his gun, his permit. So, you know, uh, Connecticut is really tough. I, it really is. And, you know, you can't say the town because he's been in this town for years. His family's been in this town for years. You know, when the cops and the detectives went there, you know, they said, Chris, we got to do what we got to do. You know, um, so it, it was really, uh, you know, like, hello. So, but anyway, let me go inside here. I got to go see my foot doctor because apparently I have an in